Well, thanks for joining me for another episode. And I thought it would be interesting, this particular segment, to talk about what to look for in a financial therapist. Now, I'm not talking about personality. I'm talking about training. And it's a little bit of a challenge because the discipline of financial therapy is really, really new. Um, there are some things that you can look for that will help. But understand that anyone can call themselves a financial therapist. Um, you might not know this, but it's the same with financial planning. Anyone can call themselves a financial planner. Those terms are not copyrighted. They're not um, uh, accredited. They are completely out there for the use for anyone. So you've got to be very, very careful if you're looking for financial therapy uh, when you're looking for a financial therapist. You cannot go on the term. Really, really important. So, wh what do you do? Where do you go? Where do you start? Again, there is no um, degree in financial therapy. You cannot go to any university in the nation and come out with a master's or four-year degree in financial therapy. Um, hopefully that isn't going to be the case for a real long period of time, but as slow as academia moves, it could be 10 or 20 years before we've got a certified degree. So that that is of no help. <clears throat> Let's start with um, the one that, that might be the most helpful. There's a certification called the Certified Financial Therapist, and it's in, in the middle of a change. Right now you'll see them uh, Certified Financial Therapist dash one, level one. Uh, to date, that's the only designation for a Certified Financial Therapist. And the general intention of this designation was to have three levels with level one being the uh, least uh, accomplished and level three being the most. That's going to change and I'm not sure what the level one is going to be called. It could be called an associate uh, financial therapist. That's my best guess right now. And the level two may be called a certified financial therapist. And the level three may be called a certified financial therapist supervisor. So right now, today, as I'm recording this, there is not the level two, which I think will become the certified financial therapist. But nevertheless, there are, I don't know, a couple dozen, maybe a few more, uh, certified financial therapist level one in uh, the United States. And it, that's a good thing to, to look for. What does it mean? It means the person has had some training in financial planning. For example, they could be a CFP. They could be an AFC, accredited financial counselor. They could have a bachelor's in financial planning or a master's in financial planning. Probably they're going to have one of those four combinations on the financial side. On the therapy side, they could have a master's in mental health counseling or marriage and family therapy um, and potentially be licensed, but they don't have to be. To be a level one, you just have to have one or the other in those disciplines. So you can be, have a master's in uh, clinical financial counseling. 
and have nothing on the financial side or have a CFP on the financial side and have nothing. And when I say nothing, I mean no formalized training on the uh, mental health side. So this particular program, if you, if you don't have formalized training on each side, then there's a series of videos that you can go through to, to learn some, uh, I don't even, I think competency may be a little bit too rough or too stringent, but to learn something about mental health counseling and then to learn something about what is financial therapy. Um, there is an experience level of 500 hours of, of uh, doing financial therapy or being engaged in one of the, the disciplines or the other. Um, and then uh, you have to pass a comprehensive test. So the, the train, it's, it's not being certified as a financial therapist level one is not so much about the training program they have. It's more about honoring the training that you've done or that particular person has done in both of these fields. So it's not the be all end all. It is a wonderful start. Somebody that has obtained that particular certification um, has demonstrated a passion for uniting uh, emotions and money, financial planning and therapy. Uh, so it, it's a really great start. However, it still can require some inquiry on your part as in into their particular training. Um, there's some certified financial therapist level ones that will go deep on the therapy side and a little bit lighter because they don't have a lot of training on the financial side and then vice versa. Uh, typically financial planners that have a heart and soul for the emotional side but uh, may not really do um, what you would think of as deep therapy. They may do something called uh, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy which is a little um, uh, kind of uh, more cerebral. So I, I could go on and on. I've probably gone on long enough. <laughs> but that's a great place to start. Financial uh, Therapy Association org is where you can go and find a list of members. Now not every member is a CFT1. So you want to look specifically for that designation. Uh, also, when, when you're looking for a financial therapist, I do know a few that have not received their certification. They do have a CFP and are licensed therapists. Well, that's a wonderful combo. So just because they don't have the CFT level one certification doesn't mean that they're not a great financial therapist. So you're looking for formalized training in both financial planning and mental health. That's, that's the combo. All right, what else can you look for? Um, because on, on the financial side, there are other trainings that really can equip, especially, well, uh, that, uh, a fan, financial planner or a licensed therapist in becoming a financial therapist. One is called the CEFT, Certified Financial Transitionist. This uh, is a uh, certification given by the Financial Transitionist Institute, Susan Bradley, uh, it's her brainchild. And it's a year-long course in how to help people with transitions because financial planning and financial therapy is about transition. Um, typically, when we have challenges in our life, uh, there, something's ending, uh, there, there's a new beginning on the horizon, but usually we're in the muck in the middle. Um, her manual for this course is brilliant and not that if you're a consumer listening to this, not, not that you're going to read it, 
but she equips typically financial planners with some really nice interior uh, therapeutic type skills. So that is a great designation to look for, the CEFT. Um, while we're on trainings that financial planners can, can get that can help them with the interior side, there's a, a financial fitness coach called the FFC that is given by the AFCPE. AFCPE. And that's a requires 70 hours of uh, training, 100 hours of experience. And this particular program is run by Sandra Davis, who's a phenomenal coach. And really, really helps usually financial planners start understanding um, the emotional side of helping their clients create the life that they want. So it's definitely experiential. It's definitely on the interior. And along the same lines, there's a CMC, Certified Money Coach, uh, done by the Money Coaching Institute, Deborah Price. Uh, that has a 250-hour program. Uh, no experience really needed. You do, you, you do have to, sh to submit two demos. Um, and that, again, is training and coaching. Oh, what's coaching? Coaching is not therapy. Coaching is I this is how I describe it. It's standing with the client in the present, looking toward the future, looking at what's possible. Therapy tends to be more standing in the present, looking toward the past, and being more focused on the problem or the blockage. Okay? But nevertheless, coaching is important if I'm going to a financial planner uh, and they have a coaching degree. That's going to let me know that they're, they're about more than just the numbers and the spreadsheets and the mutual funds. Um, another one that's a good one is called an RLP, a Registered Life Planner. That is a certification by the Kinder Institute. George Kinder founded that. George Kinder is a founder of, they, they sometimes called the father or the grandfather of life planning of starting to bring together emotions and money. Um, his training is about 100 hours. There's no real experience needed necessarily for that. Uh, and George is a, a phenomenal trainer. So that's a great designation. If you are considering somebody that has, uh, is licensed in mental health, is a licensed therapist, sometimes we call them, um, if they have a designation called an AFC, Accredited Financial Counselor, that I, I like to call that the CFP Lite. That is a shorter program, uh, about 126 hours. It does require 1,000 hours of experience. Um, and the focus is, is on a kind of a split between uh, the nuts and bolts of fi financial planning and uh, coaching skills. Uh, of course, the best designation to look for there is a certified financial planner. So those are some certifications that mean something and that I would suggest uh, if the person you're talking to has those, it's going to indicate to you that uh, they're spanning this area between financial planning and therapy. Um, I'd like to then talk a little bit about graduate certificates. Now this is not a certification. If you have one of these, you don't have initials behind, behind your name. So they're, it's going to be harder for you as a consumer to determine this level of training and then again you've got to interview. You've got to interview anybody that you're considering as a financial therapist. So this is one area you want to explore. What type of, of intensive training do they have? The certifications typically don't take 
as much, much intense study as uh, a certificate, a graduate certificate. Um, there, should I say, maybe a, a little easier to get or require a little bit less time. Graduate certificates are typically given by academic institutions, by a university. So there's, as I said in the opening, there is no degree in financial therapy. This is as close as you can get. Uh, K-State, uh, out of Lawrence? No. Ooh. Oh, I just made a bet. Oh, <clears throat> I'm not going to be forgiven for that. Out of Manhattan, Kansas. It's the other university that's in Lawrence. Uh, Manhattan, Kansas, K-State is probably the leader in financial therapy and bringing uh, financial therapy into an academic uh, situation. They have a certificate in financial therapy. They've had this for, I want to say, four-ish years, maybe, five-ish years. Uh, it's an 18-credit-hour course, which means there's, there's six segments to the training. I would love to do this course. I considered it when they first came out with it, and I just could not get it to make sense in my schedule. So I can't give you a personal uh, experience in going through it, um, but I, uh, I, it is the most intensive certification course out there. So if you've got somebody that has a uh, financial therapy certificate from K-State, they probably have had tremendous exposure to the whole area of financial therapy. Uh, the next one is the Financial Psychology and Behavioral Finance Certificate given by Creighton University's Hayter College of Business. Creighton is out of Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, this is taught by Brad Klontz and his dad, Ted, who were uh, my co-authors on three books. Um, they do a phenomenal job. Um, it's and, and again, I haven't been through it. I really looked hard at doing it. And again, I couldn't get it into my schedule. Uh, I suspect it um, uh, has a lot of motivational interviewing in it, which is just a phenomenal um, technique of learning to be with a, with a person and learning to drop your agenda. So it's uh, very experiential. And I would look very positively at anyone that has gone through this particular uh, uh, certificate training program. Uh, they should have a really good idea of, uh, of the um, financial therapy, the blending of those two worlds. That's 15 credit hours, so it's, it's a three credit hour shorter than the the K-State offering. The next one is a financial life planning certificate. It's given by Golden Gate University. It's a nine hour credit program. So that means a year, nine, you can do uh, nine credit hours in a year, whereas say financial therapy by K-State, it's gonna take you two years to get through unless you double up. Uh, you can't double up on the financial life planning at Golden Gate University. They give one three-hour course every four months. So it will take you a year to get through that. Uh, the cost on that one is uh, one half, one third the cost of the others. So it's uh, pretty portable. Uh, now, a big disclaimer, I'm a, an adjunct uh, faculty professor at Golden Gate University. So I basically teach uh, my textbook or the book that I wrote with Klontz is called uh, Facilitating Financial Health, which is also used in, um, well, it's used in every certificate program there is. So um, I do know something about that program. Sondra Davis teaches one, uh, one 
four-month course on coaching. Elizabeth Jeton, who was um, with me in the second training that George Kinder ever did when we were exploring emotions and money, uh, is a, a phenomenal financial planner turned coach, turned doctorate in education, I believe, uh, has a does a wonderful overview of uh, financial life planning. So that's uh, that's a good one. Um, not as long as as the other two. And then there's a new one I just heard about life centered financial planning out of Texas Tech. It's a nine hour course as well. Um, Sarah Acevedo, I believe, is the lead on that. Sarah is a past president of the Financial Therapy Association. Um, just a phenomenal uh, professor, has a doctorate in financial planning. Uh, I do know somebody enrolled in that program, that's how I found out. I think it's just brand new. I, th I think they're almost in their first cycle of it. So I don't know a lot about it, but I know a lot about uh, Sarah and I don't think a person could go wrong there. So, so as a consumer, if someone has a graduate certificate in these particular areas of, of study, that says a lot. That says a lot about that professional. And so they may not have a um, cert certificate in financial therapy. They may not even hold themselves out to be a financial therapist. <clears throat> uh, probably a lot don't. But as a financial planner that's gone through these uh, programs, they are really dialed in to the emotional side of money. They may not, they may not, um, do therapy in kind of the traditional sense into really delving into um, um, real, really wounded areas of a person. But uh, uh, if you're looking for a financial planner, this is the type of financial planner you're going to want to associate with. At least, I think. <laughs> I think that you do. Um, and it's possible you may find a therapist that has done some of these too, which lets you know they're dialed into the to the intersection of, of, of money and emotions. And that that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a financial planner, we're looking for a therapist that has done some training on the other side. Um, that has a sensitivity. When we're, when we're looking for these individuals, we're also looking for people that have done their counter-transference work on money. What does that mean? What that means is that they have, they have done something to look at their own money issues. Um, is it possible you can go through these trainings and not look at your own money issues? Well, I suppose it is with some. I do know at the Golden Gate University program, my four-week course is, or four-month course is all on doing your own work. Um, so, it, it, you know, it just depends. And it's really hard to find this out. Um, and there's a way of interviewing a financial planner and a financial therapist to see if they've done their own money work and maybe that would be a great uh, segment uh, for, a, for a podcast. Um, so, you know, I, I've thrown a lot at you and it's kind of like this big unknown. Unfortunately, I didn't give you Steps one, two, and three of how to assure you're going to get a great financial therapist. Um, so, but it's so hard to put this stuff into sound bites. And it's the Wild West right now in financial therapy. So, it really behooves you to ask a lot of questions and to, uh, to do a little homework before 
engaging somebody as a financial therapist. Again, just because it's on their website doesn't mean they are. I have it on my website, financial therapy. That, that is uh, no guarantee that financial therapy is being done. So I, I hope this has been helpful to you. Again, just as, as a recap, your the certifications that you're looking for is the CFT1, Certified Financial Therapist 1, a CEFT, Certified Financial Transitionist, um, an FFC, Financial Fitness Coach, a CMC, Certified Money Coach, or an RLP, Registered Life Planner. If you're talking with a, a licensed therapist, it, you would like to see at the, well, if they have an AFC, Accredited Financial Counselor uh, Certification, uh, that's pretty good. If they have the CFP, that's golden, right? Um, but you, you want to see that they have had some training on the financial side of things. When it comes to certificates, you're looking for somebody that's gone through the financial therapy certification at K-State, financial psychology and behavioral finance at Creighton, the financial life planning at Golden Gate University, and the life center financial planning at Texas Tech. I am certain I have left somebody out, and I completely apologize. I have, uh, these, are, these are the programs I know of. So if you have a program and right now you're um, um, <laughs> throwing things at your smartphone <laughs> like crack, you didn't mention us, please let me know. And I will make sure that I include you on my list of references. And when I update this in the future, I will definitely include you. I, I might even include you in a more upcoming episode just to say, okay, here's who I missed. So, okay, uh, thanks for listening and um, uh, learning with me, and I look forward to talking with you uh, next week.